Hello my friends and welcome back to my painted channel and in this video we are going to be painting a branch witch. The branch witch is a hero model from the Games Workshop uh, Age of Sigma uh, box set. So this is from the Sylvanith army and we're going to do something a little bit different with this model. We're going to paint this model up from black. So this model was sent to me by a friend and it was already primed with a black primer. Now normally if you watch a lot of my videos you'll see that I prime with grey most of the time. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to paint this one up from black. So we're going to make this a little bit different. And I'm also using quite a few different sort of paint sets as well. So I have quite a few different um, AK Interactive paint sets that I've uh, recently purchased. So I wanted to try those out and see sort of how different they would look. So instead of painting this down and dry brushing and, and using shades and washes and all things like that, we're going to build this up from black as I say. So just using that black primer as the base colour, I'm just going to go straight in and use uh, my first sort of uh, base colour on top. So we're using an AK Interactive leather brown. So I've included the model number of the paint and things like that that I'm using. And pretty much that's all I'm doing is just using uh, the brush with quite a nice thin down paint. Just building this colour back up on top of the black. But I'm kind of leaving the black in the recess point so that this is creating the element of depth. But without needing too much of the shade or anything like that. And from there once the um, leather brown is dry. And then moving on and just putting a dark green grey across these little vine areas across the back. And of course I'm also going to do this colour across the vines on the back of the pole arm as well on his um, scythe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build colours up rather than put a base colour then wash and then build back up. So we're just going to build up straight from the original colour. And by using thin colours and thin tones, this allows you to put multiple layers on without losing the detail and without losing too much sort of contrast and things like that. So as you can see, as that original leather brown uh, has dried on the model, you'll see sort of the colours and things starting to show through already. Now the good thing with using sort of a black as a base colour is this will allow you to use that colour to create, uh, as I say, an element of depth by leaving uh, the black sort of in those recess points as well but also it tones down the colour as well so what you're finding is the colour that you put on top because it's nice and thin it's actually giving you more um, more option to sort of build those layers up so the more that you build those layers up the brighter and more vibrant the colours can, can, can become so once I've done the green, then I'm just moving on and I'm using a Vallejo Flat Earth just down the, um, the sort of handle and the wooded area of his scythe. And I'm just covering all of that as much as possible. Um, but again, this is very thin down colours. So we're trying to leave little gaps here and there to try to create that depth and create sort of little uh, strips and stripes in the wood and things like that. Now once that's dry, we're just going to move on to the second colour. Now. By building these colours up, we're going to go up in stages and in steps. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that I build up in stages when I'm painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this leather brown with a deep brown. Now both of these colours come from the AK Interactive uh, Skin and Leather box set. So if you're interested in painting this sort, in this sort of way, you could buy a single box set and it will have all of the colours in there that you'd need to be able to do this sort of thing. Um, so all of the colours that I'm using for this kind of model is coming out of that. Uh, that skin and leather box set and these are all of the browns that I'm using to build the branch which colours up and as you can see while I'm painting I'm trying just across the shoulder point there just to leave a few little gaps and a few little um, strips of black and things like that underneath uh, underneath showing through so that it kind of gives a, a, an indentation or sort of a an inkling to the the depth and the um, the sort of muscle tones or the fibers of what would be sort of essentially a shoulder blade but made out of wood so we're kind of using some of the same effects that we use off skin but just across the wood here now, by all means, you could dry brush your models and things like that. There's all different ways in which you can paint. But I just wanted to try something completely different and build up and see sort of how we get um, or, or see how far we can get with this sort of colour transition and these sort of blends and things like that. And see sort of how the model looks and give us a cool different way of painting up uh, a hero model as well from the Sylvanith set as well because these, these, these models have got so much character. They've got bags and bags and bags of character. So once we've done that first highlight, we're then going to go on and just use the deep brown on its own. Now the deep brown does say on the bottle that it comes as an intense colour. Now what that means is, is a lot more vibrance to this colour. So when you're using this, again, make sure that the paint is nice and thin so that the transition between the layer below and this layer just on top is nice and smooth and pleasing to the eye. 
you don't want to go too extreme and just use this straight out of the bottle without thinning the paint um, because then your blends and blending those colors together is going to look a little bit sort of um, it's not going to look as pleasing and as natural so when you thin your paints down it naturally blends between the color below and then the color that you're mixing and again you can use multiple layers as well to get that vibrance to really pop through and show through um, and give yourself a little bit sort of uh, more layers to build up that level of, uh, of transition as well. It's something that uh, the more you do and the more you practice, sort of the better you become with it. So have fun with it and play about and enjoy yourselves. Now, as you can see, using just this, this deep brown here, you can see just how intense the vibrancy is becoming and sort of how much we're getting sort of color and things built up on the, the, the most raised areas, so across the chest, the face especially, so that we're picking out all of those details and picking out that great character that we've got in the face. And what we can do by doing this is allow sort of the darker colors to sit underneath and just pick out some of the more raised areas so we can kind of control where the light source is coming from as well. So we should be able to sort of um, leave like the stomach area and things like that, the shade below, while using this highlighted layer above to create that level of light and highlight across sort of the top area to the model. And this will give us a really nice depth, a really nice color transition and a really nice sort of contrast between that light and dark as well. Especially when the light is catching your model sort of from the top angle. Um, so yeah, have some fun with doing this and building that sort of colour where you kind of want the uh, the light source to be. So once we've got to that stage and everything sort of dried up, I'm just going to move on and use that deep brown, but I'm also using a very small amount of light earth. Again, this colour comes in the same box, that sort of leather and skin box. The difference with this colour is light earth is a lot more sort of like a, uh, I want to say like a kind of creamy uh, colour. So this isn't so much of a brown, but this is more used as like a highlight. So I'm just using this in small stages. I'm not mixing this massively. So I'm not using like a 50-50 split. I'm not doing this half and half. This I'm just adding a small amount until I'm happy with it as a highlight. And then I'm just once again, just catching the most raised areas, catching the highest points, you know, across the shoulder, as you can see, just across the chest. And of course the face and things like that as well to pick out the character as much as we can. So just showing you as much on the model of me painting as possible, just so that you get an idea as to how I paint and the way that the painting is going as well. Um, I always like to, to give out sort of like, uh, or show you guys sort of like longer videos of me painting points so that it gives you an idea as to how, how I paint the, uh, the, the sort of effects and things like that. So you can actually see it working. Um, it's one thing to have things described to you, but it's another thing to actually see it come into life as well as you paint and as you progress. So we're moving back to the, um, uh, the scythe, so just going across to the handle, and I'm using the straight uh, natural step up from the flat earth, and I'm using back to that Vallejo, and I'm using a beige brown for this one, and this is just an, a next step up from that flat earth, and again, as you can see, I'm just painting the raised points, but I'm leaving with the, the tip of the brush some of the areas where the flat earth is, so that it creates these kind of like, um, almost like... Um, lines and strips and things like that and it creates that depth so we got the transition between the black underneath and the flat earth then the beige brown so again it's, it's creating contrast creating depth uh, but all that just through uh, a little bit of brushwork and um, and a little bit of control as well and then once that's done as well we're just going to aim uh, we're, we're just going to head on now with another highlight and for this one I've mixed a little bit of bone white and bone white is one of my favorite sort of colors to mix with things like browns and things like that because this is a creamy sort of off white this uh, works really really nicely with sort of brown colors when you highlight in so just using that beige brown and a little bit of that bone white and again mixing it to the point I think this one was um, half and half so this was just sort of 50-50 um, you know one one dropper of uh, beige brown one dropper of bone white just to make a nice smooth highlight uh, onto that normal beige brown and again using nice thin paint so that they blend together and that transition is lovely and smooth and again as you can see I'm just leaving gaps as well as much as possible so that it looks a little bit like wood and it looks like we've got that kind of wood grain transition effect as well now for the scythe, I've gone for trying to do something completely different with this. And what I'm going to do is, if you watch some of, uh, if you watch my other video where I did or try doing the uh, non-metallic metal, what we're going to try and do is we're going to blend some yellows together to kind of get a similar kind of effect, but kind of like a magical transition. So we're going to blend these colours together. So we're starting off with a bronze flesh tone. And bronze flesh tone is a, it's a kind of yellowy colour, but it's quite a thick colour. It's a really good colour to use as a base coat. Now from there, 
I'm just going to use a wash of soft tone. So this is an army paint, a soft tone. And I'm just going to manipulate this so that I get a little bit of that brown and darkness into that swirl and that sort of um, symbol that we've got on the weapon. Because we're going to build these colours and these yellows back up and create sort of a uh, magical sort of effect. Um, but we also want some of the brown and some of the, the, the points sort of where the... Um, uh, the, the sort of effects and things are we kind of want those to darken down as well so that we get that, tr that that contrast again between the light and dark now i haven't painted up the tabard so the tabard area that you can see on the miniature i haven't painted that up i've left that as just the original sort of leather brown and that's all i'm doing is just adding a military shader to this um if you're a citadel user you can use an Athonian camo shade and that will do the same sort of thing and that's all i'm doing is just using that because it's got a slight hint of dark green to it to create a kind of dark green shade into the original brown and tone it down so again that contrast between the lighter points higher up and the darker points lower down should work quite nicely and then we're going to go back onto the scythe and we're just going to build our scythe back up now so with yellow colors yellow colors tend to be quite thin so you do tend to need to use um, a couple of different layers of these but we'll build this up in a really nice um, sort of uh, ma ma magical um, sort of metallic kind of way so I'm just going to a gold yellow first I'm just gonna build up where I want the yellow to be and after that's dry I'm gonna use a deep yellow and for this uh, for, for this stage I'm using a stippling effect so this is gonna start to build a highlight but by using a stippling effect it's not gonna be um, perfectly smooth so this is gonna make the weapon look a little bit worn a little bit rugged a little bit jagged so that it's not perfectly smooth so that it's not perfectly sort of uh, flat and things like that it's gonna build a really 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 nice and cool element of texture to the model and to the weapon as well so once that point is dry I'm gonna use a highlight in yellow now of moon yellow a moon yellow is a really really good highlight again uh, to get the effect you probably need about two sort of uh, layers of this one because it's a nice thin color but you can already see just by going across the very edge and the outside just how much that's boosting the vibrancy of the yellow so we're trying to stick this as much to the outside of that yellow of that scythe as we can so that we're leaving the brown as much into that middle area as well and this is going to give us that smooth transition now with that moon yellow we're adding a small um, a, a small amount of pastel yellow from the AK Interactive so this is a mixture now between Vallejo and AK Interactive and again just using that stippling effect I'm using a much smaller brush so I've got more control over where that stippling is going and I'm just stippling just across the very edges of the weapon as much as I can and once that area and once that element is dry I'm just using the pastel yellow on its own and with this one I'm using a much much finer detail brush I'm just going to try and catch around as much of the edge as possible because this one is going to be the one uh, this is the layer that's really going to boost that um, uh, that contrast up to a much much whiter color so this is going to give us more of that searing white hot sort of magical effect so we want to control where this is so we're going to try and put this as much around the edges as possible as you can see so just gathering up around the the, the sort of point of the weapon and where that um, that sort of white white hot edge of the blade is going to be just going to pop a little bit just in the center as well and just freehand in this to see sort of what looks good as we paint in now with the final stage to the weapon just using that pastel yellow and I've also mixed in a little bit of white as well it's very 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 bright vibrant white this one so again this is creating a really really nice highlight and we focus in this as much on the very very edges of the blade as we can so again we're building up to that real extreme sort of edges and the real sort of bright bright edges that we can now once the blade is done, so that's given us the main main body of the uh, the model and the blade then as well in that nice uh, bright bright yellow and that sort of uh, magical transition, we're just going to move on to this area which is sort of like hair, uh, but obviously we don't want it to look like hair uh, because this is sort of like a, a tree, so we go into that light earth colour that I mentioned earlier and this is sort of like a really... Um, uh, it's sort of like a really sort of um, dead flesh kind of colour and we're just going to use this one to cover all of the hair area and then we're just going to go around this quickly with a strong tone so that this gets into all of those little gaps and creases and crevices in the hair and the reason for this again is that contrast because the, the the original color that light earth is quite light when we put that shade in it's going to sit in those recess points where you can see like the hair is just sort of crisscrossed and folded across 
and then using the very tip of our brush we're going back to the original light earth and we're just going to start to pick out strands as you see we just paint in those very very thin lines and again we leave in some of that original color in between in those lines as well in between those strands creating depth creating sort of an element as though it looks like hair as well which is a really really nice simple to do effect but build in that sort of depth and using that light earth then for the next highlight we're just going to mix a little bit of that bone white in that i mentioned earlier so again mixing those two color companies together a little bit of the ak interactive a little bit of the vallejo together and just getting a nice natural highlight to them uh, which will create a, a real nice amount of contrast again you'll hear me talk about contrast quite a lot it's nice to have that mixture between the light and dark because it should offset colors and be more pleasing on the eye and things like that so moving back onto the vines that we were using, uh, that, that we painted originally, for this one I'm just using the dark green colour, and that's all I'm doing is just using nice thin paints, it's just painting up as much of the vines as I can, uh, but trying to leave just that little transition there back onto the weapons uh, sort of handle, so we've got a mixture between that, that green and brown. And then from there we're using that dark green again, but we're mixing in uh, deep green, so the half and half. Deep green again is one of the intense range, so again that's going to give you a much, much brighter vibrancy. And this time we're only sticking just a little bit further up, so we're just putting little bits on, so we're not covering the whole of the vine, uh, just so that we're going to catch more like towards the edges. And by catching the, the, the tips of the vines and more towards the edge of the vines, we're going to get more of a vibrance and more of like a, a, a colour pop towards the end, giving that contrast between the darker points up to the light edges. And again the same, just the deep green on its own, and as you can see I'm just catching as much of the edges as I can without painting the whole thing. So again just boosting that vibrance in a more controlled way towards the edge of the vines, giving me more control as to where that highlight and that, that light is going to be. And the same just across the weapon. And then for the final stage we're using that deep green and then light green as well. And again, just catching the very edges now, as you can see, so just boosting that vibrance in a very, very controlled manner, right to the very edge and right up onto the very tips, as you can see here. As I say, it's nice to do multiple layers, so it's always good to do at least two layers, maybe three, depending on how much you thin your paints and how much of a vibrancy you want and things like that. But by doing multiple layers, as I said earlier, that transition is a lot smoother and a lot more natural for you to, uh, for you to look at. It's a lot more pleasing on the eye. It doesn't look too over the top or garish or, or wild or anything like that. Now just to mix things up a little bit and give a little bit more colour and just a little bit of uh, a, a distraction on your eye as well, I'm going to paint this one up in a little bit of a cherry blossom type of way. So I'm just using squid pink from uh, Vallejo and I'm just going to paint this on the very edges of the leaves. There are also some leaves just across the, um, the hair but they are very very awkward for me to film uh, myself painting. You might be able to see them just across to the left behind the horns. Um, but I'm painting exactly the same colour, so I'm just using a little bit of the, the pink and a little bit of the green and just trying to pick out the detail as much as I can. Now once the pink is there, just a quick little dab of uh, red tone uh, or caribou crimson if you're a Citadel user. Just a little bit of a red wash just to create a little bit of depth again. Now for the little bug, so this is the little bug kind of uh, creature that we've got sitting on our branch which is shoulder. We're going to want to paint this something completely different. So I want this bug to really, really stand out. So we're going to paint this with like a really sort of white colour. So we're going to start with a ghost grey and then we're just going to use a null oil to tone that back down so that it shows a lot more of the detail and things like that just around the legs and the sort of inner sort of belly to the, the, the bug as well. Once the null oil is dry and the, the, the wash is dried, I'm going to go back to that ghost grey and build that sort of brightness back up. But this time we're going to leave out where the, um, the wash has sat. So we're just going to catch on to all of the tips of those uh, legs and all the little uh, pokey out bits like the spikes and things like that. I'm just going to use the very, very tip of the brush just to catch the edges of these and all of the legs as much as we can. Uh, these little bugs are really, really cool part of the... Uh, the, the sort of Sylvaneth army and we're going to paint this one up using sort of colour shifting paints as well so we're going to get this uh, bug to really really stand out off the model as well. So once the ghost grey is done we're going to mix a little bit of dead white in. Dead white again is a very very vibrant sort of white colour so we're going to get this next smooth transition up from that ghost grey to ghost grey and dead white 
and this is going to be a nice pleasing transition as you see i'm just focusing this area now onto the very tips of where the claws are on the head so that this is giving us a, a nice focused area as to where the highlighting is and again just focusing that just around the feet and just around the legs that are poking out as you can see and then when that, once that bit is dry as well, just using the dead white on its own, just to focus on the very, very, very edges as you can see. And this should create a really nice sort of vibrant sort of edge highlight uh, to the model. And that is going to be something that's quite pleasing as well, because we've naturally progressively sort of built that shading and highlighting back through. And so I'm just catching the legs and things like that, just seeing where the highlight needs to be. So as I said, we're going to paint this one in a shifting colour. So this is using the Vallejo colour shifters. And the one that I've opted for is the green to violet blue. Um, there's a lot of different colours in the box. I've done a quick review on one of the box sets that I've got, which is the Space Dust one. And they are great, great, great fun paints because they are amazing for things like bugs and things like that. So in a Sylvanet army, these are great, great paints because this colour change just kind of... Um, it does exactly what it says. It kind of changes color as you move the model in different lights. So this is giving this little bug on his shoulder something completely different. You should stand off the model because the colors are so unique. The colors are so bright and vibrant, but also with them changing as well. Should breathe a little bit of life into that miniature as well, giving it a little bit more of a, uh, like a, a, a cool character. Um, in, in such an easy, easy way. Now with the color shifters, that's all they say on the box is to just pop them onto black. So with them being base coated in black, that's all we've had to do is just pop that color shifter on and straight away it's gonna create the effect that we're looking for. Wait for it to dry down and then he already shifts color. It's fantastic, it's easy and it looks great. Now from there as one of the final stages, just gonna move on and I'm using ink for this. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of ink. So I'm using a little bit of the bright yellow ink and I'm just using that watered down and nice and thin so that it fits into the little sort of um, the, the model sort of um, little motifs and little symbols and things on the head, on the legs and things like that. And then I'm also using gory red, which is a nice shiny red, just to pick out the eyes on both the little bug and the model itself. And then as the final stage, moving on where I've used the yellow. We're just going to use a small amount of orange as well. And we're just going to catch this now in a smaller part of the symbols. So whereas you can see the symbol is all yellow, we're just going to add a little bit of orange into small, small stages and into small, small steps. And the reason we're doing this is just to kind of break that color up so that it doesn't look too extreme. But it also then kind of looks a little bit sort of fiery, a little bit more alive. So the color is not just one flat yellow color. It gives it a nice smooth transition between multiple colors and makes it sort of sit and suit the sort of um, the, the, the wooden effect and the brown effects that we've put onto the model as well. Now you can be as safe and as as as, as um, gentle and, and as perfect with this as possible, but the best thing to do once you've done this is to just quickly go back across the uh, the wooded area as well, just to tidy things up because ink, although it's thin and things like that, can be on times a little bit messy. And then once it's all done, that's all you've got to do is base him. And as you can see, I've opted for something nice and bright and green. I've put a little stone on there. Um, but all in all, uh, I think the branch witch. Is quite a successful little painting. I love the transition of the color shifting paint and I also love the fact that painting the front part of the worm white really makes it stand out from the uh, contrast of the wooded character and also that yellow scythe is really looking magical and really looking sort of uh, amazing with those yellow blends. So you have to let me know in the comments below which part of this is your favorite, if the color shift works and what you think of the character overall. As always my friends, Thank you for tuning in, thank you for your support, and thank you for watching, and I will see you again.